unburied dead are coming back to life, coming back to life. My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. Good, huh? There you go. Darren, did you paint you Darren? Do you know the end of that screwdriver got painted orange? I don't have a clue. I uplift people. I lift them up and make them think anything is possible. Freak, I have a question for you. Oh Mark. What do you know about that? I did it. A lack of Why would you do that? I need to paint a nut for the valve cover. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. I needed to paint a nut for the valve cover. That worked really good. Darren, was this yours? No, you can use it. I'm looking for the lacquer thinner, buddy. No. I'm just curious, why? You, what does that have to do with painting a nut? It worked out perfect. It's a good holder for it. it worked perfect. I'd like to know where the lacquer thinner is. Do you know where it's at, Mark? Yeah, there's some right inside that door right there. Right okay, inside that door is a five-gallon can of lacquer thinner. Thank you, buddy. Why would you do that? Why would you? My name is Mark Warman, and I bring dead cars back to life. We restore cars to original equipment specs. These cars are not customs, they're not modified. No chopping, channeling, or aftermarket parts are used. To set in motion a car's future, we have to dig up its past. We're hunting down history. We're turning over rocks and we're following urban legends. We'll travel to the ends of the earth to find the right parts for these cars. We will get to the bottom of how a car was built, where it was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we'll bring it back. It's exactly the way they were made the day they were built. The strength of American muscle, back from the dead. I think one of the most important things when you're assembling a crew is to make sure that you have the physical ability to beat each person up that works for you, um, either on a one-to-one -one basis or as a collective group. The main guys that work with me, Darren, Royal, and Josh, of those three, I would say that Royal has the most hands-on experience. Between Mark and Darren and I, there's about 60, 90 years of experience. We've all been doing this since we were kids. Darren is a mile wide and an inch deep. I'm really not the hands-on type guy that really does goes out and fixes them, repairs them, puts them together. He knows a little about a lot. He's like I have more knowledge, yes, than actually hands-on. Which can make him dangerous, but it can also make him very helpful. I've seen other people do it, so I can act like I'm gonna do it and tell them how to do it. I'd be a good boss. Royal's very detail-oriented, so I can rely on him to put the power brake system together, crawl under the dash, make sure that all the wires appear that they're, the way they're supposed to appear. The OE stuff is a little anal to me. Uh, but he will have to come to me for the actual color codes, finishes, the correct bolts. Mark knows all the codes and the options and things like that. Uh, Josh is learning, but is learning fast and doing a good job. I really don't know all that much about OE restoration, and like I said, I'm slowly slowly learning. He does lose things from time to time, which is gonna get his face kicked inside out. But, um, but I probably won't kick it in right now. I'm gonna kick it in later. I think that there's a certain amount of respect that if they know that maybe one day you're gonna walk out and you're gonna punch them in their Adam's apple or, or you're gonna yank their ear off their head and hand it back to them with a can of crazy glue. Uh, I think what you'll end up getting out of that group um, is a little more attention when you speak uh, fear's good. Fear's good. If it is not there, I will get out of this car and I will pour my wrath out on everybody here. You know, you're lucky I don't throw you in there and just shut the trunk. There would be nothing better to give your granddaughter on her 16th birthday than a pink Mopar muscle car.
Currently, we're working on four cars in the shop and the 71 Cuda out in the graveyard. In the body shop on the rotisserie is the 1970 Dodge Challenger 440 automatic factory sunroof car. Next it is the 1971 Plymouth Cuda 344 speed. Over in the final assembly bays are two cars, 1971 Dodge Charger RT, factory 446 back Sherwood Green, and next it, a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner in violet purple, all numbers matching. So today I want to finish assembling the dashboard for the green 71 Charger RT and get it installed. So if I can just finish buttoning up all the under dash stuff, we can set the dashboard in it and we'll actually move on to the next part of the car. So this uh, clevis pin that goes right in here, I had one. Just curious, do you remember when I asked you to put that clevis pin somewhere safe so we'd have it? Uh, I, I really wish I could. A clevis pin takes the place of a bolt in an application where something needs to be fastened together and yet it rotates. I told you specifically that we needed it and to put it somewhere we'd be able to find it instead of at the bottom of the vacuum cleaner when you vacuum the car out. Oh, have, have you checked the bottom of the vacuum cleaner? <laughs> good point, good point. You know, I can't emphasize enough following direction how important <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is funny. It's not actually, where's the... Uh, I'll take one for the team. I probably well, do. you don't have to take one for the team. You, you're the one, the team's taking one for you right now because you actually were supposed to put it somewhere safe. And I was just wondering if all y'all chose not to on purpose or if you just got busy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Has anybody seen the clevis pin that came out of the power brake booster for the 71 Charger? It would be the one that I specifically asked Josh to put somewhere really safe because we probably didn't have another one. He, he kicks me down and beats me down, but if that's what he needs to make himself feel better, we're already over everything, so it's fine. Has anybody seen a little thing, uh, like even a baggie or something that he would have put the clevis pin into? Who's he? Oh God! No, just just does it matter who he is if I'm just looking for the clevis pin? Just pretend. Make okay, he Mark. You want. No, it doesn't matter. May he anybody you want? Now that you've visualized that person, whoever he is, do you know where he might have put the clevis pin? You can get that in later, can't you? You're in there trying to balance a flashlight all the way up inside of a dash like this, and put a pin through a hole that you can't even see because your eyes aren't focused. Well, it's, you know what? Because of that, you're putting it in later after the dash is in it, deal? Okay, everybody, you got that? Or you are a laugher, you freaky nervous laugher. Yeah, let the joker do it. After the dash is in, you're gonna put that clevis pin in. And I am gonna laugh my ass off. There's no room under there. You're upside down, the blood will rush to your head. Cause you're gonna, first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna have an aneurysm. You're gonna be under there so long, you're gonna have an actual aneurysm, and I can't wait till you do. Cause I'm not calling 911, I'm not doing nothing. I think he needs a hug. Don't blame me, man. <laughs> I don't know, do you hatch your wipers or something? Yeah, I think my dad's a pretty good grandpa. I mean, he doesn't call her names yet. Waits till like, I don't know, four or five. So she can actually comprehend what he's calling her. But right now he just baby talks to her, it's really cute, and he, he's kind of scared to hold her still, but he talks to her and watches her and from a distance. My granddaughter just came into the world four weeks ago today, I think, and uh, Alyssa and Josh are engaged to be married, they're the parents. Yeah, they do. Hello, what are you doing? She definitely likes me better than everybody else. Better than me? Yeah. Really? Are you sure about that? Well. They both work here. Uh, Alyssa works in the office and she's kind of the resident historian. What about here? What's that? That's a crush though. She does a lot of the searching out parts and cars and pieces, following some of the stories and the legends that we hear when we buy a car. Working with my dad is tough. He, I think he is a little harder on me than he is on other employees. And it has to have a crush on the 71. It was mandatory by the Department of Transportation, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, was it? Yes, it was. That's okay. very good. He expects me to know just as much as he does. But I don't. I've known Josh for about a year, and for the last six months he's worked for me at Graveyard Cars. He had no formidable experience with cars, so I started him out in the component detailing and restoration. I restore the seats, the seat frames, the hinges, steering linkage, the components. Well, you say yeah, but yesterday you said yeah too, and you didn't kind of do it, so I was just wondering if all y'all could stop what you're doing and get them done now for me. 
along with the other hundred pieces. Along with the other <laughs> pieces, right. All the little details that nobody wants to do, that's my job. I gave her a little taste of milk. She drank some, is that uh, right? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> well, I don't know if they have some weird freaky feeding time or something. <laughs> I wouldn't say that uh, Emma likes me better than her parents. I think that she can relate more with me. I think we probably are at that point where I'm, I'm she calls me G-Paw. Well, she hasn't yet, but she will call me G-Paw. We decided that's gonna be, I'm not gonna do the Papa, Nana, Goo Goo, Baba, and G-Paw or G-Pops. Or you could just call me G, you know, if you just, you just call up and say, hey G, what's up, like that. And I think, um, I think because of that, we've already began to forge a special bond. <laughs> you get hungry? Oh, I like ham. When I first found out I was having a granddaughter, I immediately started looking for a pink Mopar muscle car. As far as Mark buying my daughter a pink muscle car and fixing it up, I think that's an incredible thing. I thought there would be nothing better to hand her on her 16th birthday for a present than a beautiful bright pink FM3 Panther Pink if it's a Dodge or Moulin Rouge if it's a Plymouth muscle car. I mean, what if she doesn't like pink when she gets older? Kind of pushing that on her as a baby, I mean. When she's 16, she might not even like that color. For me as a kid, I've always wanted to, you know, to have a muscle car, not necessarily a pink one, but I mean, it's for my daughter, so that's, I think it's really cool. Awesome grandpa. Yeah, I'm gonna find a pink car. Go. We've been working on these other cars so much that we haven't put any time in on the CUDA. I got fire, baby! If I wasn't sad from all this misery, I'd hug you. With the boneyard out beside the shop, the easiest thing to do when you're missing a part is go out, find the car that you have that matches it, and just pull the part off the car. How we doing, Doc? Good. It's easier than looking through drawers and bins and underneath boxes. Hey, uh, Mark, this thing is giving me hell. Can I borrow you? And I could say I'm sorry all over again. See, it's not a problem for you to be upside down because you're 10 years old. Try it when you're four, 38. I would not be talking about how old you are. I would say Mark is a mixture between both Mr. Miyagi and Arlie Army, huge resemblance there as, as far as looks. I think Josh likes to tease me about being old because I'm a grandpa now. When we were growing up, grandpas were old, it seemed like, and, and even the word grandpa, which is why I don't go by that and I go by G, because it's more of a usefulness. Get the part yet? No. That you lost? Originally? Hey, <laughs> I've got some duct tape for your mouth. Hey, if anybody else, they'd have been fired for that. Anybody else would be fired for that. Darren has pioneered all new areas of being annoying. I think he's looked up people online that are the most annoying and then figured ways of improving on it. You get special treatment? Everybody loves Darren. Love him or hate him. Are you guys gonna set the car on fire now? I can tell you that it begins usually with a physical or personal assault on you or something you've done. If I wasn't sad from all this misery, I'd hug you. <laughs> I need a torch to get a bolt off a car. Ooh-wee. This clevis pen that is attached to the brake, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. If it is not there, I will get out of this car and I will pour my wrath out on everybody here. Make sure when you pick that clevis pin up, you put it somewhere where I can get my hands on it. You got her, boss. You know it's gonna be an extremely long day when the first part you pick up to put in a car is missing and you have to go out and cut the half of a dash out of a car to get another one. Darren. Hi, Mark. Call 911 right now so they're here in time. They're on their way, I guess. Good. The restoration of an automobile instantly becomes plagued with problems the minute you stamp it OE because you can spend hours trying to find one bolt, one nut, or in this case, one clevis pin to finish putting the car together. All right, Dad. I got fire, baby. It's the extinguisher. I got water right here, too. Whole bunch of it. Need an extinguisher, just fire, just water. A little water would be great. Cups bucket full. Water will be awesome. I can do it with water. That's, that's so great.
Wow. Let, let me See guess. that pin right there? Do you recognize it? That Clevis pin is one of the most stubborn things I've ever seen. I've never seen it. So we'll see if we have any more luck outside here. Oh yeah, now it's like butter. Underneath a dash upside down, mid-seizure, it's not nearly as easy. You, if I asked you to wire wheel it, put a little thin film of grease on it. Right. Find a cotter pin that would go into it very nicely. What are the odds that I will be back outside that car, upside down, looking for that part again? Well, if you want it to happen. I don't I want it to happen. I do not want it to happen. I'm gonna because I'm telling you that the next time it's going to be really bad. The worst part is, he's going to be my son-in-law. You know, we'll get over it. It is what it is. And hey, how's it going? We're not going to get over it if you do it again. Anyways, Where's the clevis pin? I'd like to. Where is it? I'd like to get on with my interview here. <laughs> Well, now that we finally found the clevis pin and got all the pieces connected under the dash, it's time to put the dashboard in. And not six hours too soon. Arr. Well, they're way too long, too. I had a whole dash kit here. See, they got a bigger head. Yeah, those are the ones. Four of those. It's one of 6971 Charger RT446 packs in triple green. They probably only made a handful of those. One all green was too many. What's the option for the factory rear spoiler? I don't know. Then don't ever talk to me again. <laughs> this is the thing you can spend hours looking for one screw, one screw. I have got to find one more screw. So there's probably one just laying in the front floor of one of these cars. It's just a Phillips with a pan head. They used them on roof rails too. Done. So what I was saying, Darren, is it's got to go almost like 10 inches, 12 inches, right in that area there for it to have the exact correct look that the factory did. Because remember, they were actually bolted on the cars. At the factory, when the 440 engine was originally painted, the negative battery cable was installed on the engine at that point in time. That's why we spray painted part of the negative battery cable orange. That they did have that on and they did have the valve cover grommet. Did you get that painted? Mm, the exhaust manifolds were on too, weren't they? Because They, painted they were, them. yep, and they're yeah. orange too. And they looked awful. I mean, Put the paint bird off them in a very short period. That's got enough paint. Okay, he don't listen. Well, I'd like it to shine a little bit, that's all. Okay, maybe you should buy some good paint. It's perfectly good paint. Have you ever noticed, I'm just curious, that you're absolutely that nerd from school? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, who are Were you? Were you ever cool in school? No. Were you? Yes. No. Oh, oh, yeah. According to who? I was everybody. <laughs> everybody. Even the kid that broke your nose? The kid that broke my nose did it because I wouldn't shut up. Yeah. So you got to get this really hosed on there wet. Because if okay. it's not wet, it's going to dry flat. Okay. Now I want you to know that the first five times I told you that, I was kidding. But I want you to pay attention this time because I'm actually serious. So you got to put The it message on. is the same, but I was just kidding the first five times. So when you didn't do it that way, it's okay because I was just kidding. So just real quick before everybody goes, I know this was a weird day. We got about an hour's worth of work done and we've been here all day, so everybody's tired. I don't want to belabor anything. I know I beat you up about the clevis spin. My guess is that probably won't happen again. And Darren, a couple things just to remind you of. Oil and paint are a lot like Superman and kryptonite. So if you're gonna paint a valve cover for me, don't set it on top of an oil can that's covered in oil and hope just for some reason that it doesn't fish eye. Cause, Cause it's not a very smart paint. You know, it's not like super smart paint it says, ooh, we're around oil, so that's not gonna affect us today cause Darren's sprint and they'll just lay out. It's not gonna work that way. Okay. Darren, thank you for your help today. You're welcome. You're the best. I wanna find a pink car for my G, my G daughter, I call her G. You look like George Clooney now, dude. I've got five cars in there torn apart, 10 customer cars, the weight of the world. He might've been doing 80 when he hit the embankment.
Every car has a story. Currently, we're looking for parts that we have leads on for the 71 Cuda. You don't care if it takes them 500 hours to fix it, right? That'll buff. <clears throat> That'll buff. What do you say about me being buff? It's been, you know, one to two years the car's been here. It probably hasn't been touched in about a year. Yeah. Suppose you can repair that too, huh, fool? I might section it. Whatever. Well, why don't you just, here, why don't you help the body man and put, sit it down and stand on it. Don't waste it, straighten it out for a little bit for him so he doesn't have so much to do on it. We've been working on these other cars so much that we haven't put any time in on the Cuda, um, which I think is the coolest car we got. That's true. Absolutely true. I think got hit hard. Oh boy. I mean, these are supposed to be in line. <laughs> So after talking to Jerry, the guy who wrecked the car back on July 5th, 1980, I found out that he was racing a 1967 Ford pickup, of all things. They had just come back from a little store over in Alpine where they picked up some refreshments, I suppose. They were playing leapfrog on an old country road. It got out of control when he came out of a corner and he went all the way around sideways, backwards into an embankment, crushed the left quarter, shot him across the street, crushed the left front corner, that bounced him back into the middle of the highway. By that time, the Ford had swerved out and gone around him and pulled over, and he came to rest in the middle of the highway with no axle underneath it. He told me he was going over 100 miles an hour at least when he went out around the truck. So say he hit the brakes and slowed down, he might have been doing 80 when he hit the embankment. <laughs> the funny thing is, is as, as smashed as that car is, as crushed as it is, because it's about a third of the normal length of a 71 Cuda, he isn't just destroyed himself, but he told me he walked away from it completely with a ripped pair of brand new jeans and a cut on his left knee. It's just another one of those amazing stories. When I first saw the 71 Cuda, I was just appalled that he even attempt a project like that. The car is just watered up from one end to the next. It's been over a year since we did the last pull on the Cuda. The left quarter was pulled, the right quarter was pulled. The roof was pulled out to its original shape and actually looks really good. It just needs a little bit of metal finishing. Left quarter needs to be replaced, right quarter is salvageable. Upper deck filler panel will be saved. The door openings are square and true back to their original size and shape. And the cowl, which had some pretty nasty wrinkles in it, came out remarkably well and need just a little bit of metal finish on them. So we'll be able to save two thirds of the original unibody on that car. And, and, and honestly, that adds to the value of the car. We're in the process of trying to track down the original pieces and parts missing off the 71 Cuda. Here's what we know from the fender tag already, okay? We've got the date that it was made, February 24th, 1971 in Hamtramck. Searching out the history of the car is most important for the fact that we can find missing pieces that came off of the car over the years. We have like six years missing in there. And those six years are the crucial years that I think are gonna show where the motor's at. Baresco bought it out in Springfield with no motor in it and apparently no title. It's fun to be able to go back and look at a car's history and meet the people who have owned it before and hear their stories. I knew it was something special. And we come up with some crazy pictures of guys and we ran into the gentleman who had stored it for over 10 years at his place, which was the father of the young man that wrecked it back on July 5th, 1980. While we were at his house, we happened to come across an original lower core support out of the car. Right Son here. of a gun, look at that. Almost 30 years. <laughs> he had also stored the original 410 ring gear out of the Dana and the left rear axle. It was amazing to be able to go back to someplace 30 years later, and it's almost like stepping back in time like it was yesterday, and here's all these pieces and parts. It was really, really cool. I think the Cuda just more or less got forgotten. It was just buried out back. When it goes into the metal dipping, it'll come back raw with no paint on it. It's not gonna go out there and call the dipper today and have this over there tomorrow and have it dipped by next week. Then what do you do with it? Well, the thing is, is I know we, we can't get it out tomorrow to the dipper. I know what you're saying. It's gonna be a while. But the fact is, it, it can't just keep getting forgot. We need to get that Cuda in and get some more pulls done, figure out what other parts we need, get them ordered. The client's gonna be wanting us car back. He's getting a little bit wear and thin on patience, so we, we got we can't forget it. We got to get on it. With all due respect, I don't know what you guys think. I've got the entire weight of the world. I got the move that's been just killing, eating me alive. I got the city that's pounding on me to get everything done in time. I've got five cars in there torn apart, 10 customer cars, the weight of the world, a granddaughter I'd like to spend some time with. We've been working on the Roadrunner, the Challenger, the Charger RT, the 
other CUDA. So until those cars are done, I can't jump back outside and grab the 71 CUDA six barrel car and move it inside and say, ooh, look at us, everybody. It's time to go to work on a six barrel car. I got a lot of pressure and I know, and I know, and I know Larry's tried to be understanding. He's a good guy. Because Larry would like to have the other cars back before he dies. It's one of the things he was pretty adamant about. Yeah, I'm gonna find a pink car. You know, you're lucky I don't throw you in there and just shut the trunk. Well, it is what I do for a living, actually. <laughs> there would be nothing better to give your granddaughter on her 16th birthday than a pink Mopar muscle car. You know, I don't even know what it needs. Nope. Uh, nobody nobody uh, got back to that. We're kind of uh, uh, in disarray without Mark. You in here? Okay. Where's Mark at? See, tell us what he wants done here on the car. My wonderful father-in-law is in looking for a pink coronet. Your father-in-law? Yeah. Did you get married? You guys did not know that I am engaged. We well, you know you're engaged. I know you're engaged, but I thought you were so, talking like you got married. a guy or a girl? Oh my God. <laughs> So I'm looking for a car for my granddaughter. I thought there'd be nothing really cooler than on her 16th birthday, giving her a uh, Panther Pink, original Panther Pink Mopar muscle car, restored by G. She calls me G. Half inch heater hose. You got the clamps for those rascals? Ah, uh, they should be on that table, right, if you ordered them. Oh hey, Darren. God. Oh boy, what now? Yes, buddy. What is it gonna take? <laughs> For me to get you to style your hair. I thought it was pretty styling already. <laughs> There's nothing to it though. I well, mean, what is it supposed to look like? Yeah, it's calling on your uh, pink AAR CUDA that you have online. Like right now, we should go. We should go put some water, water in it, and just spike it, huh? Yeah, let's do oh, it. Wow. Maybe another day, okay? Why? It needs to be a factory FM3. So what color was this one? <sighs> okay. I don't mean to waste your time, it's just, I, you said Panther Pink in the ad, I thought it was a Panther Pink car, so all it is has been painted pink, right? You guys just come, come to the conclusion that we're not gonna get anything done and that today is a free day. Why don't we just take the day off then? Okay, let's really try to find something the car needs. All right, I don't know where he's got all the parts of the car at, okay, honestly. So if it's not an original FM3 Panther Pink, um, don't bother calling me back because I wouldn't be interested. Slip it on there, I guess. I will do this. Oh, I know where these you go. Put some water in your hair and just style it. Here, let's put these on too. Darren, come on. Right, I wouldn't be that frustrated. Uh, and I'm sorry if I sound that way, but I spent the entire morning looking for these cars that everybody says is FM3 Pink, and they are painted pink, but they didn't start pink. If it's your own personal car and you want to change color, knock yourself out. But don't put it on the fender tag and don't tell people it's a factory, that factory color because that's, it's misrepresenting it. Well, it is what I do for a living, actually. <laughs> Whatever the fender tag says, it's not my choice. I didn't create the car, I restore the car. So, yeah. Well, you have a great day, too. You know? She'll like pink. No, she probably will. I know she will. I'm just say, I'm just trying to take She'll some like of the pink. load off of your shoulders. You have so much going uh, on. I know. And you want I know. To but find a pink? I want to find a pink car for my G, my G daughter. I call her G, GD, not the acronym, not like that. Oh God. Why won't you just style your hair? For like three seconds. You're infatuated with it, aren't you? I am. Darren likes to manipulate people and try and get to you mentally. Craziest thing, Darren came up to me and he goes, hey there, buddy, how do you get your hair like that? It's like, dude, it's so easy. Darren, I'm just giving you a hard time. You know I got nothing but love for you, baby. Because <laughs> he's weird. Nothing but love for you, Darren. He's a weird one, isn't he? Let's do it to Royal's hair. Oh, that's funny, Don't Darren. hit this into that hood. Let's move the hood. That's funny, Darren. I guess Darren's a fun guy to mess with. I'm just more you know, serious about working on the cars. You know uh, how these hoses are routed, or should I wait till Mark gets back? As long as it can't be that difficult. Do you need clamps? All I'm doing is taking out some bolts out of the core support. Oh, put the correct ones in there for the radiator. Oh, 
Oh, you oh what are you so doing? Lovely. Okay. Oh, show me love, Darren. <laughs> show me love. Style. Cut, cut, trim. I gotta. <laughs> you look like George Clooney now, dude. Complete transformation. George Clooney, eat your heart out. <laughs> I have to look at it, I guess. <laughs> It's just a bad hair day all of a sudden. <laughs> what if she doesn't call you G-Pops? She'll call me G. She'll probably call me G or G-Pops. One of the what two. What if she is totally different than you think she's going to be? Completely. She's exactly the way she's going to be. We've already discussed it. <laughs> that looks a lot better. That would look better. Are good. That would look better than normal. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, Mark. What do you think of my hairstyle? So what all did you guys do while I was working? Um, not much actually. I have been up front all morning long looking for a pink car for my granddaughter. Good These drive. guys have done nothing since I've been gone. You, look at the shine off of that. Look at that glorious looking bean. Hi. But we're, you guys have done nothing. You put a coil relocation bracket Mark, I on. I got no parts. They're all, they were all here. Anyway, Where'd I'm gonna find a pink them? car. Who put these heater hoses on? I did. Why, it just drives me batty. I just put the heater hoses on the heater core. I was waiting for... Mark, what have you not been done since you've been out here? What have I done? Yeah. Well, thank you for asking, Royal. I've actually figured out the routing for the heater hoses that you guys put on that must have took three seconds. I know we got cars to get done because I'm the one that schedules them. I can't sit there and wait for him to get off the computer. I could paint any car here pink and say, oh, look, granddaughter, you got a pink car. But I'm a purist and I'm an OEM freak. I make cars the way they were the day they were assembled. So I got to find a car that was assembled in factory FM3 Panther pink. I've also determined that we're missing a bunch of parts. <laughs> I have come to that as well. Hey, I came to that conclusion three hours ago. It's just like with Barbie, you do, you know, you didn't see Barbie go out and just buy like a brown Jeep and then paint it pink so all of her friends would accept her, right? When she, she, when she went down to the beach, those people that were looking at her knew that was pink because if they found out that it wasn't pink, if one of them popped the hood and saw a little brown coming through, it's like, ooh, look at Barbie, she's not real. Ooh, look at her, she probably dyes her hair. You know, next thing you know, she's got no friends. There's a huge sucking sound. Everybody's gone, all her friends have left her because she's a liar. This mark. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? I am. It's actually what I did uh, all morning long, calling people who said they had Moulin Rouge and Panther pink cars and they turned out to be clones. <laughs> you know how it goes. And it's definitely pink all over it. And it's a WM. Oh, yeah. No, that's definitely what I'm looking for. What are you doing? I'm looking on Craigslist. A certain little uh, Tyler up in Portland just called and said there's a pink 70 Super B in a guy's yard up in Salem. It's painted orange now, but he thinks it's an original pink car. The, soup, the, uh, the fender tag's gone, but uh, he says that car is pink all over. We got pink! It's supposed to be a factory pink car. Oh, well, he's a hillbilly, isn't he? I'm scared of getting stuck out in the backwoods. I watch all those movies. I'm like a serious yellow or something, see it? On the clip. You can't say no to that face. Heading up to Salem to look at a 1970 Super B that's supposed to be a factory pink car, but got orange paint all over the outside of it. The guy that called me and told me about it said he stopped and looked at it and underneath all of the orange is pink. Nice. So, but look, it was an old race car. Yeah. Look at the old fuel shutoff switch. Is that what that is? Yeah. It's been tubbed. Well, how long has it been sitting here? He said it was uh, that it's been sitting out here for a couple months or something, but it was really dirty, and he didn't notice it until somebody washed it. Well, somebody washed it all up. And then all of a sudden, the orange. You could see it coming up the roads. What one guy said. Huh. But I, oh, there it is. 
Look at that. It is. Pink, pink all over the floors. Pink, pink yeah. everywhere, yeah. It's a pink car. I've been looking forever. I can't nice. believe it. That's awesome. There it is. It's a good one. You can look for a good Mopar, but try to find a good pink Mopar. Good luck with that. The rod's bent. You see that? That's limelight. The scoops? No, here, look right here. That's limelight. Limelight. Or serious yellow or something, see it? On the clip. You're trying to bring me down again. Darren is bar none the most annoying man on the planet. Always has been, always will be. You can ask anybody around him, friends, family, people he doesn't even know. Anybody will tell you he's the most annoying man God ever created. No, I'm not. You, you, I just was looking But look, look at where the fender tag goes. And that car. fender tag hasn't been gone that long. Look. It's a real pink car, yes. Pink. Yes, it is. Thank you. It's a real pink car. Is the guy around that owns this thing? Simple guy. No, I've been pretty fortunate. I've I've met some pretty nice people. Uh, a lot of country folk when you get out into that neck of the woods, so they're usually hospitable. But I've met some that meet you at the very front gate with a gun and tell them to get off their property. It's got pink all over the floor. I think he's over here. Let's go. Yeah, he's over there. Well, he's a hillbilly, isn't he? Boy, he is. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm scared of getting stuck out in the backwoods. I watch all those movies. He's got a good hand. Look at the beard on that guy. Try driving out to a town that doesn't even have a consonant in its name with Darren. Nobody around for miles. I got nothing but one little gas station. He don't look too friendly, does he? I, I don't want to be um, some big, great big greasy hillbillies date, or sorry, uh, Appalachian American. You know, because I happened to turn left when I should have turned right. I think that's, that's too big of a price to pay for, for turning the wrong direction. Looking for a car for your granddaughter. A friend of ours told us about that old Dodge out front. Is it something we could look at? Sure. You can I'm, I'm Mark. Laser Kalugan. Let me check. Laser? Laser Kalugan. Laser Kalugan. This is my buddy Darren. So you just bought this place? Oh, a while back. About a year ago or so. I noticed it's clean. <laughs> All this, this little guy right here with the bucket and started cleaning around here. Yeah. You wash that car? You had a bucket and a rag out here. Well, all right. There's supposed to be a tag right there. Um, I may have it. I just need to look through all the paperwork. Uh, that fender tag will tell us exact, it's kind of like a birth certificate. It'll tell us the color of the car originally, the motor, even though the VIN tells us that. But it'll also tell us other options that maybe are gone now. But like this hood, I can tell by looking at it, it's absolutely an original pink hood, so it must have been a pink car. Yeah, huh? there's there's pink it's in the way trunk. Cool. There's pink in the trunk, pink in the inside. It doesn't have a lot of mileage on it. It's like 5,000 miles or something, even less. With an odometer that can roll over and show zero miles, the owner or the seller could tell you the car's got 5,000 miles and maybe it's 105,000 miles. If you can take a windshield wiper and move it halfway up a windshield before the motor engages, that means all that linkage has been used for X many a miles. So a 4,000 mile car would have very little play in the wiper transmission, where a car with 104,000 miles would have a ton of play in it. And look at that right there. That is as tight as you're ever gonna get one. Look at right there is where it starts to move. So. You see the bees in the quarter windows? Still yeah. after 40 years? Yeah. It's amazing, it's still there. Both yeah. sides, I think. Yeah. So this is a 440. Correct. There are a number, yeah, so, and it was originally a 383 car, as you can tell by the louvers on the hood. So the motor, that dude that had all this junk, he didn't by chance say he happened to have, or know where the original motor would be, by chance? No, he didn't, but I, I... I think I kind of know where he lives. I could check okay, it for see if tag. you can find the fender tag, and if you can, maybe we'll, uh, Pretty cool. solid. What's well, actually, it's a nice car, and I believe every bit that that's 4,000 miles. You got some guy tells him it's worth 20 grand, which absolutely, maybe two years ago it was, but I'm not paying that for it. I want to own the car. I really want to own this car. You know it's a good car. I'm going to offer him 10 for it, and, and, and just, you know, don't do your thing. Don't Just back me up on that. You have the money with you? You know, you're lucky I don't throw you in there and just shut the trunk. Look at that. Pink. What color is it? Pink. You wouldn't know you're colorblind. I can tell pink. How? Because you it's not know. orange. I can see. You know what? The eight crayon pack happened to have paint? pink in it. Oh, yes. I had to say. 
Well, when I was growing up, I had eight crayons. Back in the day, all the other kids in class had the 64 with the big sharpener on it, and they were always really nice full-size crayons. My crayons were hand-me-downs from my sister, Tara, and so most of the labels were missing off of them, and it's one of the reasons that I am probably colorblind today. Yeah. It's not like you that had 64 crayons and a big spoiled dad. Kind of a funny place to put the bin. Pink. Look at that, though. All pink colors, and look at that. Right there, there's the VIN. Nice. So basically it's got the emission system, it's a Ram charger hood. I was really hoping he'd come back with that fender tag. That fender tag is your birth certificate. It contains alphanumeric codes that call out the options that came on that car when it was new. FM3 Panther Pink, left hand outside mirror. I knew we had a deal on the Super B as soon as I saw the fender tag. Um, it was just a matter of figuring out the dollars and cents on it. So I actually been looking for a pink version of any kind of a Mopar and they're getting harder and harder to find. This actually is one. So I don't know how generous that part is, but this is actually for my granddaughter who I want to give it to her on her 16th birthday. I mean, she was just born. So granted, I got a lot of time to hit the ground running. Where I'd be at is I, I'd go to the bank right now and I'd get 10 grand cash and I'd own a car if you want to sell it for that. Well, can I think about it? But just real quick here, I know you got to go, but um, just real quick show you something. I'm pulling out my Trump card. Oh, wow. That's her. Yeah, yeah, she was born. born three weeks ago. Trump card. Yeah, I remember when you were that small. <laughs> now, come on, make me a deal and I'll be back in the afternoon with 10 grand and pick it up. <laughs> you can't say no to that face. You uh, cannot say no to that face. <laughs> I'll find you a duster. I will find you a duster. My name is not Mark G. Warman if I do not find you a dust. How about 12? Cards, the car is pretty much all there. Split it with me at 11 grand. I wasn't going to do it, but I will do it. Now, after seeing the picture, how can I not? I got my own self that backfired on me. Now you're going to have to <laughs> find me a dust or a 71 Cuda. I will find you a 71 Cuda or a 71 Duster. And I have some I can look at, I know. Yeah, you know what? I will find them and I'll make my other thousand dollars back on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Thanks, man. <laughs> Anytime. I keep very, very fit. I'm in good shape. I can run. I, I, when I was growing up, I had about an 80 mile an hour fastball. <laughs> it hurt, didn't it? Yeah, you got to stand there, don't you? <laughs> Shoot, I missed it. Um, right now, if I were to burst out these doors all Forrest Gumpish, I could probably go maybe three miles on a run without stopping. I'm not a fast runner. I never was a fast runner. I no more. Uh, in school, I kind of developed a cool run. Well, this was worth it, wasn't it? So all in all, we had a pretty good week here at Graveyard Cars. Four guys, 40 hours, what's that, 44, 16? So in 160 man hours, we managed to... Get about eight hours of work done, maybe. 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 We managed to get the dashboard and the 71 Dodge Charger, Sherwood Green, factory 446 back, one of 98 ever made. Detailed under the hood of the Charger. Heater hoses and proper clamps. What did we do to the battery cable? We painted the battery cable orange on the engine. So overspray from the engine got onto the cable. And a lot of people make that mistake when they're detailing a car, they don't realize that those were installed. We also happened to find the 1970 Dodge Cornet Super B. Yes. Factory FM3 Panther. Nice. Panther, one of 32 ever made. Awesome car. Beautiful. Which makes me the coolest jeep on the planet. You got one fan at least. Nice face. Thank you. Hey everybody, Mark here from Graveyard Cars. I can't put the top up until you hit subscribe. So I'm begging you, hit subscribe.